Hey everyone, in this video what we're going to do is figure out what the limit is as x approaches 0 of tangent of x divided by x all raised to 1 over sine of x. Let's begin by rewriting the limit in the following form. The limit is x approaches 0 of e raised to the natural logarithm of tangent of x divided by x all raised to 1 over sine of x. We can actually move the limit inside to the exponential function as the exponential function is continuous and we can use the power rule for the natural logarithm to bring this power down to the front. Doing so we have e raised to the limit as x approaches 0 of the natural logarithm of tangent of x divided by x all divided by sine of x. Now if we were to evaluate this limit inside the exponential function in the numerator we would have the natural logarithm of the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of x divided by x. This limit just equals 1, so we would have the natural logarithm of 1, which is equal to 0. And in the denominator, we would have the limit is x goes to 0 of sine of x, which is, of course, just equal to 0. So we have a limit of the form 0 over 0. And in order to evaluate it, we're going to have to use something called El Hopital's rule. El Hopital's rule basically says that if you have a limit as x approaches some value c, of a function f of x divided by another function g of x, then this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches c of the derivative of f of x divided by the derivative of g of x, given that f and g are both differentiable at c, and that the limit is of indeterminate form 0 over 0, or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. That criteria is satisfied for our problem right here. So let's go ahead and apply a Hopital rule to it to try and solve it. So we have e raised to the limit as x approaches 0. Now, in order to take the derivative of the numerator, we need to use the chain rule. So we take the derivative of the outside part and then the derivative of the inside part. The derivative of the natural logarithm is just 1 over its argument. So we have 1 over tangent of x divided by x. And in order to take the derivative of the inside part, we need to use the quotient rule. So we have x multiplied by secant squared of x minus tangent of x divided by x squared. And in the denominator, we just have cosine of x. Simplifying this expression gives us e raised to the limit as x approaches 0 of x multiplied by secant squared of x minus tangent of x divided by x multiplied by sine of x. Now, if we were to just let x tend to 0, in the numerator we would have 0 multiplied by 1, as secant squared of 0 is 1, minus 0 is tangent of 0, 0. So we would just have 0. And of course, anything multiplied by 0 is just 0. So in the denominator, we would also have 0. So the limit is of the form 0 over 0 again. And we're going to have to apply a Hopital's rule again in order to solve this problem. So we have e raised to the limit as x approaches 0. Now, in order to take the derivative of the numerator, we're going to have to use the product rule. So we just have secant squared of x plus 2x times secant squared of x times tangent of x minus secant squared of x. And we're going to have to use the product rule again to take the derivative of the denominator. So we just have sine of x plus x multiplied by cosine of x these two cancel. Now, if we just let x tend to 0, in the numerator we have 0, because tangent of 0 is 0, and anything multiplied by 0 is 0. And in the denominator we would just have 0, because sine of 0 is 0, and 0 times cosine of 0 is just 0. So we're going to have to apply a Hopital's rule for a third time in order to evaluate this limit. Doing so, you have e raised to the limit as x approaches 0. Now, in order to take the derivative of the numerator, we can use the triple product rule. Doing so, we have 2 times secant squared of x times tangent of x plus 2x multiplied by 2 times secant squared of x times tangent of x times tangent of x plus 2x times secant squared of x times secant squared of x divided by cosine of x plus cosine of x minus x times sine of x. Now, if we were to just let x tend to 0 in the numerator, this would just go to 0, this would just go to 0, and this would also just go to 0. But in the denominator, this would go to 0, and this would go to 1, and this would go to 1. So we would have e raised to 0 
divided by 2, which is just equal to e raised to 0, which is equal to 1. And that is the final answer to the problem. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this content useful. If you did, could you please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. I hope you have a great day.